If you want to learn to build your own software so that one day you can make a living on your own terms, then don't be fooled by anything you watch online that suggests it's going to be easy. Because whatever framework you choose to use and however easy it claims it's going to make your life, there are inevitably going to be edge cases that catch you out and make building what you thought was a simple web page into an activity that takes days of your time. The good news is that facing these challenges and eventually overcoming them is what can make building software so satisfying as every small win is a small dopamine reward for your brain that makes you want to jump straight into the next challenge. Today I focused on building a thank you page for my new web app. Like most of the features that I implement, things don't go to plan, but I managed to overcome the challenges and get my web page finished. Using these five problem solving techniques I'm going to run through in this video. I'll often get an error due to something wrong I did in code like an undefined variable or anything else that means my code failed to run. In which case my first port of call is ChatGPT and what I love about this tool is that I can paste in the error that I receive and also a sample of my code and for the basic types of problems it normally does a pretty good job of suggesting a fix. Unfortunately ChatGPT currently has its limits. What I find most frustrating frustrating is that when it doesn't know the answer it tends just to make something up. Hopefully future models will improve but for now when ChatGPT fails to deliver my next port of cool is the official documentation. If you think about it, because AI models are trained on the content of the web, there shouldn't be any need to read the documentation, but currently I find it's the fine details in the documentation that AI models seem to miss that can often be the answer to your problem. For example, today I've been interacting with the GitHub API, which was returning what I thought was an unexpected error code, but when I read the documentation, it was apparently working as expected, so I just had to handle the the error in my code. Looking through documentation can sometimes feel like a waste of time, but if you plan to build web apps long term, then you can think of any time as an investment in learning about the tools you're going to be using for the next few years at least. But as well intentioned as the developers of these frameworks, tools and APIs are, the documentation only represents part of the story because what's missing is the undocumented behaviour that you might only find using everyone's favourite search search engine. As frustrating as it feels these days to trawl through search results on Google, it's a necessary evil for anyone trying to solve weird issues with the tools they're using. I've been creating a documentation mini site for my web app using the Nuxt framework and I've encountered plenty of problems that aren't covered by the docs. When you search Google, you can really find some hidden gems, which might be a Stack Overflow post. And when someone's taken the time to describe what worked for them, it can be the one line of code that makes you breathe a sigh of relief as you finally solve an impossible issue. But despite its promise of searching the whole internet, Google does seem to miss some golden nuggets from this next website, which is really the ultimate source of truth for all things code. Since GitHub is the repository of choice for open source software, whatever framework is causing you pain, you can search that repository to see whether there are any issues similar to yours. I'm using a tool called Serverless Framework to deploy my backend APIs, and today I noticed this error message. What I love about GitHub is that when you go to issues, search some keywords related to your problem, and then you find a result, you can read through the whole thread from someone describing their problem problem, some potential solutions, and if you're lucky you'll see the issue was closed with a neatly packaged fix. Yeah, I mean that's the best case scenario. This fifth option is normally my last port of cool, just because I like to get quick results instead of waiting on somebody else to get back to me. But when you've tried every other course of action, creating a GitHub issue that describes your problem in as much detail as possible might be your only option, aside from actually getting in the code and fixing the problem yourself. Today I opened a new issue for the serverless framework, and I was pleasantly surprised that I got a response just a couple of hours later. In the case where where you've done something wrong, maybe a misconfiguration, it's great to get told what your problem is so you can move on. But if there is genuinely a problem with that framework and somebody needs to contribute a pull request, then that's gonna take some time. 
Ultimately, getting your software product out the door is your responsibility and you can't blame a third party framework or some open source developer when things don't work out. If you've exhausted all five approaches I've described, then it's up to you to use your creativity to find another approach. In my experience, there's normally a different solution you can go for. Might not be as elegant, but if it gets the job done and allows you to move forward, it could be your only option. Final thing I'll leave you with is to take comfort in knowing that the issues that inevitably crop up in any project you undertake are par for the course. We all experience them. The challenge is to remain positive, tackle those problems head on so you can keep moving forward with your project. And in a couple of weeks time, you'll be looking back on this, having solved that problem, wondering why you got so stressed out. See you in the next one.